Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit and to hang out with all of you. I'm throwing the Bearcade, the Lego, the Scythe emote in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can reply with those emotes and let me know that you're here. And if you're not a subscriber, you could also just say hi or use someone else's emotes. But I love to hear who's hanging out in chat as we wait for the view numbers to catch up with the people that are in chat. And then we can start with our stream. Lastbrook's here. Hello, Lastbrook. Welcome, welcome. Uh, you know, yeah, the intro portion of the stream, we're getting ready to finish up one kit. We got the top half of the Glanza done. We got the, uh, yeah, we got the legs of the Glanza done. Uh, Bobby Dice Roller is here. Dude Wants His Rug is here. What's up? Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, friends. Welcome back. Uh, we got a lot of regulars here in chat, which is great. Dirty is here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Julie's here. Oh, we got a stellar group of folks. This is fantastic. And, uh, you know, as, as always, folks, if you're not in a chat and mood, if you don't feel like jumping into the chat, you're more than welcome to just hang out in any way that you're comfortable with, as long as you're not comfortable with being a jerk, because we don't need jerks in the chat. I won't stand for it. No, thank you. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm excited to finish uh, the glance up tonight. Uh, it'll take most of the stream. I think towards the end, we're just going to get barely started with the Strike Rogue. Because uh, we got to build like the backpack. we got to build the waist. And the side skirts are pretty easy to build. But then the backpack seems like it's going to take a little bit of effort to do. Uh, and then... Hey, Lord Crashington, welcome. Happy to have you here. Uh, and then we're going to start the Strike Rogue uh, uh, Odori. Uh, which... Uh, uh, sorry, not Strike Rogue. Strike Rouge. The Strike Rouge Odory is the next thing on our agenda. And I'm very excited to start that kit. Um, that is a Master Grade. Uh, it is from the remaster of Gundam Seed. Um, so it is unique to the remaster, which is interesting. Uh, and it's a big uh, pink friend. And I'm excited to work on that. I should mention that both kits were purchased due to gift cards uh, supplied by Lashbrook, and thank you, Lashbrook, for that. Gave me the suggestion to get the Strike because uh, the uh, Wyndham that we built is modeled after the Strike, so it's kind of fun to work on the big version of that. And then, also, there was money left over, and I picked up the Gundam Age 1 Glanza, which we are starting with tonight, or we're finishing up tonight. Uh, Gundam Age being the only one of the only Gundam series I have not built from. Uh, the Rouge made it into the anime, huh? Yes, so according to what my, my research, they added the Rouge Odori, like, armor stuff into the remaster of Gundam Sea Destiny, I want to say. Um, so it's in the remaster of it. I don't know. It looks neat. It's very cool. And if I was going to build this, look, am I going to build the Strike Noir? Of course I am. I own the kit. I have a master grade of the Strike Noir. I bought it with my Christmas money. So it's in my backlog. It's right. I'm, I'm pointing at it. My hand's pointing. You can't see it. My hand's pointing at it. Uh, and so I'll build that at some point. But am I going to do it now? No, because I got other kits that I'm going to build. Uh, all right. And here's the thing. The truth is, yes, I do want to be famous. I very much would like to be famous. Unfortunately, uh, KY Gonzo is not going to be able to make me famous. Unfortunately. Uh, they're just not going to be able to do it. It would be great if they could. Here's the thing. Not only can't they, they don't want to. And that's the real shame. Is that not, they don't even have the desire to do that. You're already famous to me. Well, thank you, Bobby. I appreciate that. I would like to be rich but not famous, says Lashbrook. So, yeah, because here's the thing. Fame means... We'll get into that. Uh, we'll get into the, this kind of thing. That I'm, I'm certainly not the first person to think about this. At all. Definitely not the first person to think this way. But, like, here's the thing about uh, your GB famous, the best type of famous. Yes, I'm friend of the site famous. Uh, for, for various things. Let's go to the overhead. So, uh, oh yeah, also, 
Okay, reminder, April 16th, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Central Time, which is 9 to uh, midnight Eastern. I'm taking part in this event. I already got a bunch of packs. I got more packs coming in. Um, and uh, there, I got a wide variety of packs of different kinds and sizes and from different years. And I'll be opening them every time we cumulatively hit $50. So if you donate 30 and someone else donates 20, boom, we're there. Uh, or if t five people donate $10 in a row, boom, we hit 50. Um, and as I said, that will be cumulative. Uh, all right, so let's go to the overhead here. Um, okay. Famous, last book mentions I would like to be rich but not famous. And I agree because here's the thing. Uh, particularly, uh, you also had a part in the one show, which is more than books. Yes. So I, I, yes, I have had some uh, notoriety, mild notoriety, but here's the thing about that, right? Um, internet famous is infamy and infamy doesn't necessarily pay the bills. Like, Having a million followers on Twitter doesn't mean that you have steady work or steady income. I've got almost 7,000 followers on Twitter. Do they, do do any majority of that, any large portion of that engage with anything that I say or do? Unlikely. Unlikely. Because it's infamy. It is, now that's not to say that people who are famous on the internet, some of them are successful and and uh, uh, not just earn a living they earn a surplus that is possible and doable and not impossible but it is less likely it is more likely that people that are known on the internet uh, which many people uh, communicate and and uh, interact with for free uh, yeah that they are just another person but the complete garbage element of it. Okay, so we did our upper body here. We did our legs. We got our legs. We put those aside. We're working on our um, our, our waist here. But this is the original uh, waist for the Gundam Age 1. Uh, but we are going to be adding armor to it. So I'm not going to panel line this until I am done with this whole section. And then I will panel line the whole section. Because there's not really a purpose. Because I'm not going to remove that outer armor. Uh, I'm just I just know I'm not. So I'm not going to worry about it. All right. So we need K9 from this. Um, yeah. So because people engage with other people for free, but the real problem is people think that if you are um, Twitter known, that you are a big deal. Now, that can lead to, uh, that is the assumption that you are, because you have a lot of followers, you get a lot of views, that that somehow leads to financial security, which it certainly doesn't. But it also is that thing of like, uh, you know, I have friends who are, who people, strangers, just assume are like influential in a way that they're not. They're just known on the internet. Uh, is this where clout comes from? Came from? Journey in a, in a in a way, yeah. I mean, clout is is this like because it is just complete nonsense, and clout is an extension of that. Uh, clout as like a when that was the thing. Internet, yeah. So like, I don't think I'm ever influ. Look, okay. So my influence is small scale. My influence is maybe if I will, if I keep talking about an anime and how much I like it maybe you'll check out that anime. That's my influence. Maybe if you see me build a kit, you'll be like, I would like to try that. Or you'll be like, huh, Ninja Go. I've never built any Ninjago or Ninja Go Lego. I'll check that out. Or you might be like, that kit in particular looks rad. I'm going to get it. That is the influence I have. I have learned this. Here, here is an example of where my influences don't land or lie. No one engages with my tweets about music that I like. I do not know why this is the case. But it is very true that if I tell you that a song kicks ass, it will have zero likes and it will have very few low engagement. I do not know why. 
but people do not trust my musical take tastes. Like the other night, I was talking about how Black Clover is ending tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is the last episode of Black Clover. There's going to be a movie. It'll become a seasonal anime, but it's not weekly. It's not going to be weekly anymore. Hey, what's up, Harold? Um, but I said it's here's the fact that that Black Clover's best theme, and it's had a lot because it's ran for hundreds of episodes, hundred something episodes, is actually from Squishy. The side series has the best opening. I got a like on that. And I'm like, okay, I got one like on my music post. Cool. Because people who engage with me are not engaging with me about my musical taste, which is a shame because I post, if you see me tweet about a song, I think highly of it. I'll leave it at that. Uh, is that kind of a good thing since music is so objective and people can be shitty about that? So certainly, Lord Crashington, um, if I was looking for your pure engagement, no. If my metric was getting a response, a someone replying to me, this sucks, or quote tweeting me, this song sucks, is better than the lack of response because I am using the internet to survive. So if someone puts a negative comment on my YouTube, look, do I want negative comments on my YouTube videos? No, I work marginally to very hard on every YouTube video I put up. Uh, I want them to be good and I am psyched when they are great. Uh, but if somebody is like, this sucks, that is so much better than them not saying anything at all and just thinking it. Now, is that better for my ego? Of course it's not. But is it better for optimizing the chance uh, that someone who has never seen anything that I have made checks out what I do now? Yeah, that, that definitely increases it. Uh, is the system horribly broken because it rewards engagement of any kind? Of course. It's terribly broken. But it's still the system. Now, I choose to engage with the algorithms my way, which benefits me less than it would. Like, I, I put tags in my videos, but I don't put clickbait uh, 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 style information in, in my titles. And I also don't put clickbait uh, thumbnails. Now, clickbait thumbnails are apparently getting kind of taken out of the algorithm lately, but not even clickbait ones. Uh, there's a, a certain kind of reaction shot. Like if I wanted more viewers for uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club, then my thumbnails would be m like the title and me reacting like, and that would get me at least 1,000 more views. Um, I do get the weird, uh, it's kind of a good, uh, I do get the weird, this is uh, legendary comments about the last, the least effort videos I've got on my channel, which I don't know how to think about. And I mean, they're like 15 years old. So I feel ancient when I see them, the comments, the video, not the comments. Yeah. No, I, I, I got what you were saying. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I. I occasionally don't know what to think of this stuff, but it is interesting to kind of talk about it. It's not something that I like. Like I said, I engage with it in so much that like my goal is I would like more people to see what I make. That is my goal. My goal is to get more eyes on what I do because I think more people would enjoy it. And then also if they're watching ads while they enjoy it, then I make a little bit of money. Uh, and I'm talking a little bit of money, like a every month or so, I'll make a couple dollars and I'm getting so close right now to being able to cash out that hundred dollars from Google, which would be great. And you know what that hundred dollars is going to go towards model kits. I'm going to buy model kits with that money because then I can buy model kits with that money. Like that's, that's what I do. That, that is how I use that. Um, so I would love that, you know, like. But yeah, uh, I don't ask questions. I don't ask open-ended questions looking for responses on on Twitter. Occasionally, I will ask like, hey, what are you most excited about this anime season? And you know what? I'm going to do that this week. 
I will do that in the afternoon this week. I will ask Twitter, hey, Twitter, what shows are you excited about this season? That's, that is a question that is to build engagement and further people talking to me on Twitter. Yes, but I also genuinely want to know because it's a busy season and maybe somebody is going to be watching something that I haven't heard of yet and I will be like, ooh, okay, I'm going to check that out. Like today, someone was like, hey, did you know the season, you know, the season started on Saturday, but there's a new anime out today. And I was like, Ooh, which one is that? And I looked it up because I was like, I don't think I'm watching anything new today. Uh, I didn't have any plans to watch anything new today. And I looked it up and then I realized, oh, the new anime is that one about the high school runaway who who moves in with the dude, the older salary man who got rejected by his crush. And I was like, oh, yeah, I don't want to watch that show. It seems gross. Uh, that's a, apparently a romantic comedy. And I was like, doesn't sound like it to me. Sounds like bullshit. So I'm not going to watch that. But I'm glad somebody was like, hey, that show's out today. Because I was like, oh, let me check it out. Um, when is your next video going over the new anime of the season? I haven't gone to any chart yet. So, Dirty. Um, I will plug this video now. But also, I'll mention it in the middle. The episode of Papier's Anime Club that literally went up today, we recorded live on stream on Wednesday. Um, and the first half, or most of the show, so it's a two-hour, almost two-hour video. Most of that video is my wrap-up of the winter 2021 season. The very end is my preview of the spring 2021 season. So the end of that video, you can scrub ahead, is me talking about the upcoming anime. And that is the newest episode of Pat Bear's Anime Club, which I did live on Wednesday, uh, this past Wednesday. So that should... Uh, uh, give you some information. There's a bunch... Look, it's a busy season. Winter was very busy. Uh, spring is also going to be very busy. There's a lot of stuff coming out. Uh, some of it... Uh, there are far fewer idle shows than last season, which is great. There are a lot more uh, romance shows that seem terrible. <laughs> um, but also, y'all, we get two girls who like uh, 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 two anime about girls who like a thing. We're getting one about um, uh, mopeds, girls that ride mopeds to, to school, uh, and, which seems like a slice of life that isn't uh, um, that cozy. It seems like the main girl is going through like a lot of emotional shit and her escape becomes dirt biking, which also or not dirt biking, mopeds, which also leads to her making friends. So it seems like it's going to be a slice of life, not necessarily cozy, uh, but it still seems cool. And then the other uh, uh, group of girls who are into a thing anime coming out is about girls that really get into uh, making uh, things out of clay. Uh, and that seems also super cozy and cute. Uh, and we're getting both those shows. So I'm very excited about that. And there's a couple other slice of lifey things as well. Uh, there is the dragon anime about uh, a dragon house hunting. About the dragon who uh, is kicked out of the caves that he lives in. Because he is not a scary dragon. Uh, but also regular old adventurers and other monsters are like... Yeah, but you're a dragon, so let's fight. And he's like, no, I just want to find a house. So that sounds very fun. Um, there is an isekai that is also a slice of lifey. It is, it is uh, akin to Kuma 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 Bear uh, about a, uh, a girl that is reincarnated and she is um, immortal. And then 300 years after she is reincarnated into another world uh, and she is the most powerful human. She's the, the she is the uh, strongest witch in the land. Um, and then she meets a dragon girl that wants to move in. She meets an elf girl that wants to live there. She meets uh, a ghost teen girl. And then also two young ladies decide that she's their mom. And they move in. And it uh, just seems cozy as hell. I'm very excited about that. Uh, there, yeah, there's some. There seems to be some strong ass isekai uh, this coming season. Um, so I am, as always, 
pretty invested in that. And then there's stuff that I'm not going to watch. Like I said, I'm not going to watch that uh, ro romantic comedy about uh, the guy who uh, ends up having a 15-year-old runaway move in with him. And somehow that is uh, going to be a fine program. I'm like, no thanks. Uh, I'm not going to watch the romantic comedy uh, about the Sundere, uh, or Yandere, I should say, Yandere, childhood best friend who refuses to lose the girl, the guy that she likes to the girl that he actually likes. And so they, she comes up with a plan that she, they should be pre pretend to be dating so he can m make the girl that he's interested in jealous, but she secretly wants to date him. And I was just like, that has to be amazing for me to watch it because the premise is just, I'm just like, meh about the premise. But if people are like, this is good, check it out. Uh, Lord Crashton got my first vaccine shot today. It was a productive day. Hell yeah, Lord Crashton. Congratulations. Welcome to it. Uh, I got a week and a couple days before I do mine. I'll have mine on April 8th. Uh, so a week and a couple days and I will get my second shot. And I am very much looking forward to it, of course. C9 and C10. Let's get this waste built. Um, I'm not going to watch... Ooh, it's got the name Company in it. I forget the name, the exact name of it. Um, it is it is sort of an isekai. Uh, nobody re gets reincarnated or anything, but it is about um, a... Uh, oh, Harold gets uh, his second on the 13th. Hell yeah, Harold. Hell yeah. Um, there is an isekai-ish kind of thing about a, a guy uh, who works for a company that's going to take over, try to take over the universe. So he has to go conquer... Um, this kind of fantasy world. Uh, and I was like, oh, that sounds kind of fun. He seems competent, but also in over his head. That could be good. But it's made by the creator of Konosuba and uh, Kimono Michi, that wrestler Isekai that was terrible. So I have very low expectations about that show. Uh, also... I kind of want to watch the first episode of Mars Red because I think I know what that show is about. Uh, the premise is that uh, the vampire epidemic, there's there's a vampire e epidemic. There's just too many damn vampires. Um, and so to help combat the vampires, they uh, the this, this fictional Japan uh, creates a force of quote-unquote good vampires to fight the bad vampires. And I feel like they, I don't know why what they get from doing it, but I feel like whatever they get is a lie, and the reason the vampires are considered bad is a lie. And I just imagine there's going to be a whole lot of like people being betrayed who obviously were going to get betrayed. <laughs> like it just feels like that. I was like, mm, I don't know about that. I don't know. That sounds like it's going to be not great. Maybe it'll be amazing, and I'm just being silly, but I don't feel like that at all. All right. This goes like this. So, yeah, we're building our waist. Got some armor to put on here. Get this going. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, there's some good shows coming out, and then also some stuff that just looked meh. And, you know. Which is great, because if there's too many good shows, that I'd end up not watching them until the season's over. Like, I made the decision I wasn't going to watch, uh, because there's so many shows I liked that came out on Thursday, I wasn't going to watch uh, weekly um, uh, Dr. Stone Season 2, a.k.a. Stone Wars. Um, and I, I will talk about that in the second hour. But I did finish that series, or that season. And I am excited, I can say this now, the third season of Dr. Stone is going to be them on a big ship sailing the world trying to find out more about the uh, mysterious event that petrified everyone on the planet. Uh, and that sounds like wonderful nonsense. And I am excited about that. Because the sort of like teaser of it kind of got a One Piece vibe. Like they're finally going to go on this epic adventure. And that sounds pretty rad. 
excited about the possibilities. All right, so this is gonna go in like this. Yeah, that goes in like that. And that's gonna lock in place there. Got a few things left to put on here and then, you know, panel line as we go. Um, but yeah, there's a, a bunch of new stuff coming out this season that I'm excited for. Although, here's the thing. Uh, some of the winter stuff isn't over yet, and then some of the spring stuff is going to take a little while to go, but some things are starting up. So, like, I still have to be like, okay, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to, you know, I uh, yesterday I watched two more episodes because I, I stopped after the first one. I watched two more episodes of uh, Kimono Jihen, and I can tell you that I don't think that's a good show. Um, uh, maybe it gets incredible. Maybe it's really strong. But um, the choice to make a character who, beca one, because he is part ghoul, and two, because he has had a rough childhood, um, you know, none of those things like should stop me from wanting to care about a character. But the idea that this character doesn't have much of a personality at all does make me care less because he's our main. If your main character doesn't emote, it's very hard to like me to get engaged with it. They have to be like constantly involved with people that I also care about. Like Violet Evergarden took a while for me to get engaged with it because the main character is just like. I'm trying to figure out what this meant when this when the guy that was dying told me he loved me. And that's like the core conceit. It's her being like, that's weird. Um, but the people around her are so great that, that I gave enough time for it to get really good. In my opinion, it got really good. Um, but the problem with uh, Kimono Michi is uh i don't sorry not kimono michi uh kimono jihen the, the issue with kimono jihen is um i don't like any of the supporting cast like i just don't like any of the characters in the show in any way shape or form and i think i gotta like somebody to carry me through it i can't I can't watch a show when I don't like anybody in the show. I can't do that. Maybe you can, and if you can, that's great. But like, I gotta, I gotta like people, or I gotta, I gotta hate them so much I want to see that like them fuck up and get their comeuppance. And like, I'm not supposed to hate any. I'm supposed to like the main characters in the show. I just fucking don't. So, that's a problem for me. Uh, and, I, and I said this on Twitter, that, hey, some people I'm sure really like it. Uh, and if you like it, I can understand that. Because it's, I think it's beautifully, beautifully animated. I just don't think there's anything interesting happening in it. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I watch weird stuff. I like... Some people are so psyched that they got into the uh, these the, the that quintessential quintuplets have gotten into the part where they have all realized their feelings for the main character and are now now all dealing with their feelings about the main character. And I was like, oh, oh, you mean the part I liked the least? I really liked the first season when it was just about him helping these girls and it was all these girls like trying to do their best and figure things out and I really don't like it now that it is uh, five sisters all fighting over uh, fighting with each other for a dude and then maybe make it up and not fighting with each other for that dude like that part is not what I'm into <laughs> and the whole season wasn't that but a lot of it was all right, we're going to do the other part of the skirt now. we got to do the back skirt. So let's get that going. Oh, we can, uh, yeah, we don't need to, oh, we can hit a little bit of this. Let's stand out a little bit. But yeah, um, I did do, I did yard work today, so I am feeling out of it. Uh, I've been taking a Claritin every day, 
but my allergies are very bad right now. And all I had to do was a little bit of weeding, and I had to mow the front yard. That's all I had to do today uh, for yard work. And it was still like, oh, I hate this. Oh, I hate this so much. Uh, it just felt drained. Huh. I didn't take a nap today, and maybe I should have taken a nap. But I feel like daytime naps are bad for me to do. Uh, Hugus Plastic just gave me a follow. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoy your time here. We're building model kits, talking about things. But yeah, uh, it it got cooler, which is nice because it was getting you know warm around here. But it also uh, is just, I just can't with all of this goddamn pollen. I think this week is going to be like the worst week. And then theoretically, it's all down now and everything will bloom. And then uh, I won't have to constantly be washing the cars and then washing and then washing the driveway and then washing the front of the driveway to try to get it all into a drain. Because I have been doing that. But yeah. I don't know. I had a meeting today that went all right. I'm not, I wasn't like, yeah, we're doing it. Um, a social media uh, manager for... Uh, an agency that promotes. Okay, so this is this was uh pretty fun. Uh, so there's an anime convention happening, uh, uh, coming up in uh, uh in Sacramento, and it's at a convention center. And you would think, well, they're gonna cancel that, right? They're going to cancel that convention, right? They're not going to do a convention in March 2021, right? Or April 2021, right? Because it'll be April when it happens. No, they're doing it. And uh, so people were like, hey, this is scheduled at a convention center. That convention center is for uh, for this area. The, the largest consistent vaccination site and then they looked it up and even though it obviously because the event is happening friday saturday sunday um they're closed this vaccination clinic is closed on or site is closed on thursday and friday and of course did they reschedule a lot of things for monday tuesday wednesday yes is it as is is the optics of shutting down a um uh, a, a vaccination site so you can have an anime convention, the, is that a bigger thing? Is the optics bigger than the actual inconvenience? Yes. But then you start looking, well, why was it shut down for a convention? Well, why is a convention happening? Oh, because you can operate with social distancing and wearing masks. Oh, cool. What? No. Now, did they eventually decide to move the convention to a different location? Yes, because it's outdoor. But does that mean that suddenly the vaccination site is going to reopen? No, they're still going to be closed because the venue told them they couldn't do it those days. So it's not like they're going to be like, oh, it's fine. So, and this was very fun because this was explained to me, not by someone who works for the convention. Uh, this was explained to me by the social media person because we always blame interns. It's never interns. They don't give interns the password to Twitter accounts. This is a person who is underpaid and overworked, but is still an employee of the company or the company hires a company to handle their social media because that's their job. They handle a bunch of people. But even then, those people... Don't give interns the thing. So get that out of your brain. If you've ever won, if you ever said like, oh, who let the intern? It's, like, it's never an intern. Uh, it could be somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. And it certainly could be somebody who's bad. But anyway, so it wasn't that this convention was like clapping back at like the misinformation that was being spread. Uh, it was uh, some of the people who were attending the events are all... Um, 
are, are all managed by the same agency or represented by the same agency. And that agency has a Twitter account for when they do events to promote those people at those events. So this person has nothing to do with the event that they're doing. And they also didn't make the decision that the clients of these people uh, should be promoted. They are doing their job. They are being told, hey, you got to tweet about this. So they don't want to see retweets of people being like, this sounds like a mistake. And why are you doing this? And especially they don't want to be blamed for temporarily closing a vaccination site, no matter what their thoughts on vaccines are. Because I don't know, whatever. So I get that. But also, uh, I did have people being like, oh, so you talked, like, the, the original, like, response I got was like, oh, so you got this information from the people uh, in charge of the event, huh? And I was like, no, I, I got it from an article that was updated a couple hours ago with quotes from that company. Uh, that we're producing it. And they're like, oh, great, cool. And it was like, hey, you're not, like, I know that you don't want to deal with this, but like, no, you're promoting a convention. And then eventually, uh, they deleted the tweet that everyone was retweeting. So that, uh, I thought at first, maybe they had blocked me, um, which I would have been like, you should, you're, who cares about me? Uh, Now, what I should have done was I should have just tweeted the article instead of retweeting the announcement that people were making about promoting it. I should have just retweeted the article from the newspaper, uh, the local paper that had reported on this. I uh, should have done that. I didn't. Didn't do my due diligence on that. So it is. So I understand. Uh, but also don't do a live convention in uh, 2021, at the beginning of the year, 2021. Um, don't do that. That's nonsense. Um, and yeah, uh, I just imagine that that person had a pretty bad day. And I feel bad that they had a bad day. Uh, because that's rough. Nobody wants to have a bad day at work when your work is... When, you're, when part of your work is promoting conventions and appearances at conventions... Uh, I, what I honestly I should have tweeted was, I really hope Vegeta and uh, and All Might is okay because Christopher Sabat is going to be there, the voice of Vegeta, and most recently uh, it, to a fame, he's done a bunch of stuff, but he is to a generation younger than me. It's fucking All Might. All Might's voice actor is going to be there, and I sh and I should just tweet, I should have tweeted that link and gone like. I really hope that none of y'all give Christopher Sabat COVID. But I don't want to drag him in there. But I also hope that Christopher Sabat doesn't get COVID. Because that's the because that's the man that said Mondo cool. And I want him to be okay. I want the one Mondo cool man to be fine. RIP PAX East 2021 is what Harold said. I mean, here's the thing, Harold. Like, that wasn't going to happen. They, to me, to me anyway, um, I don't know what their plans are as far as doing a PAX online. But I feel like they had to say, so that some people can keep their jobs, they had to say, like, yeah, we're definitely, like, talking with it and thinking about it and like doing everything we need to do to make sure that it, we could do it safely if we do do it and like june right i get that but like i was never like oh they're definitely gonna do this convention uh like i was just like yeah sure sure you are cool yeah boston 2000 boston in june of 2021 now it would i am saying this i've been saying this uh, while I do applaud Crunchyroll for uh, for doing the Crunchyroll Expo digitally, uh, yes, making it official hit, hits hard. Yes, I, I also doubt it was going to happen, but making it official hits hard. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Um, and let me go just quickly. Uh, PAX official. I just want to see what the PAX official tweet was. Can't remember. 
uh, yeah, Repop and Penny Arcade, they, they made this 11, announcement 11 hours ago. In light of ongoing public health concerns, Repop and Penny Arcade will not hold PAX East this year. Given the U.S. Uh, progress addressing COVID-19 in recent months, we're cautiously optimistic West and Unplugged will proceed in pers uh, person facility, uh, festivities, I should say. Um, uh, September 3rd through 6th, December 10th through 12th. Uh, since we can't uh, wait until September to reconnect the wonderful PAX community, PAX Online will return July 15th to 18th, and I will probably, uh, I mean, look, can I tell you that I definitely will be doing something at PAX uh, Online 2021? I can't tell you that I definitely will. Am I going to try my uh, hardest to get a panel, uh, at least one panel? Yes. Um, yes, they will do a PAX Online in July. Yes. So, I will be uh, submitting for PAX Online because I had fun at PAX Online um, uh, and I would, I, I imagine I will have fun doing it again. Um, at the very least, Pat, Pat Bear's Anime Club will be submitted to PAX Online. Uh, I got to start thinking of panelists uh, for that. Uh, I mean, I have some people in mind, but I got to make sure that they all want to do it. Um, but that is something that I'm like definitely going to be, you know, looking at. And then maybe I have at least one other panel in me. Um, now, will PAX West happen? I hope not. I don't think September is early. Is, I think September is too soon. Will PAX uh, uh, Unplugged happen? I think PAX Unplugged will happen. I think in December uh, they will have a smaller convention. And I think that they will... Um, they will probably have a, a smaller show floor. Uh, it's a big space. They will hopefully spread stuff out. Harold, uh, um, joking or not, uh, the idea of getting... So, logistically, doing a League of Heels show, uh, pre-recorded, which is what what it would be. It would not be a live panel. It would be a pre-record. Doing a pre-record would still be um, just an incredible undertaking, just an unbelievable amount of work. Um, now, do I want to do a League of Heels again? 100%. At the very least, the last show ended in a way that I do not want to be the last show that we've ever done. Um I want to rewrite history from our last show. It was a good show. I was happy with it. I think it ended in a funny way, but I also feel like uh, we owe it to the fans to uh, to basically, like, we got to fix it. We just got to fix it. Um, and I think we can, but we got to. Yes. Well, that was the thing. Everybody is... Every, every everybody was an undercover cop or a narc. Yes, that was that was part of the thing. Uh, so that was the storyline. But that is not to say that that has to be. A, we 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 can retcon that uh, pretty easily. Uh, so I will at some point need to do like do a do-over. I got no problems doing a do-over. We'll get it. We'll do a do-over. Don't you worry. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't, I cannot say that that will happen in the year uh, it, digitally. I don't think that will happen. Um, but PAX Online, I'm excited about. I have to email some people about that. Uh, you know, say like, hey, what would you like to see? I, so if it's not live, maybe I can do, maybe I can do a, um, an improvised postmortem. Maybe. Live would be hard. It's possible to do it. Um, it's a lot of people, so I don't know if I can pull that the bandwidth off for that. Like even like just like hosting a bunch of people in a in a recording, I don't know. Um, 
But Pat Bear's Anime Club is not hard to do. We did it PAX Online last year. I think I could do it again. Uh, so I don't know. For the very least, I would submit that. Because I think it would be good. And so now I have to start thinking about g g g g guests But I know at least one person that I would invite. And then it's about who else am I going to invite? Who else wants to do it? Who else will be down for it? So we'll see. We'll see. But yeah. It's not live, so something may happen. Yes, indeed. Who knows what, but something something could happen because it will be pre-recorded, and I don't want to, and I don't have to think about it. Uh, but yeah, I had a good time with the last digital one that I did. Uh, so maybe this time I could also nail it and get it looking good. I don't know. All right. We are done with our waist. We're going to put our legs on, and then we are going to put our uh, our uh, side skirts on, which are real easy to put on. Uh, I feel like this back thing is going to pop off a lot. Hopefully it won't. This does not feel as stable as... This high grade is a, is been a fun build, but these legs don't feel super stable. I don't necessarily love the the vibe I'm getting from these legs, but we'll see. But yeah, uh, I have submitted to a few online panels, or sorry, a, a, a couple conventions, and we'll see if anything comes of that. Some big one that's pretty small, and we'll see if anything comes of those panels. I would love to do. Uh, some more digital conventions this year. They're very fun. I'm also hoping that people invite me on their panels. I don't know. That would be also pretty neat. All right. But who knows? Uh, all right, so we got our legs done. Let's get our side skirts done. Let's get this body complete before we take our pause for the cause, which is coming. Uh, but also, body complete is not too hard for this because these side skirts are just two little pieces that need to pop on. And we'll get that going in just a second. Uh, B18. New little parts there. And then we'll get these cleaned up. I believe these are where the, um, uh, the beam sabers are stored. So we'll get that together. Uh, let's see. Other things going on with me. Uh, my next bonus stream is this Wednesday. Um, uh, I am playing Hearthstone again. Uh, there has been a, a an expansion is coming out literally tomorrow. Uh, new cards tomorrow. Uh, I believe. Double check that. Uh, uh, new Hearthstone expansion. Uh, so in basically a bunch of stuff also happened before that. But yeah, I'm 99 percent sure it's tomorrow. Uh, yes, tomorrow, new expansion starts, which is great. Um, so I'll be playing with uh, with that. Uh, also, uh, a new mode, and by new I mean classic, happened. Uh, they reverted. They made a bunch of changes. They reverted a bunch of changes they had made to some old cards. That has shooken up the, uh, the meta in uh, standard a little bit and in wild considerably. And then some people are playing classic, which basically means... Uh, it's just right now classic is what 2014 so people are just playing the decks they really liked in 2014 and the cards are just the way they were in 2014 and it's kind of neat except I really wasn't in Hearthstone then so I haven't played it uh, and it's kind of strange and I don't know if it's going to be popular I know some streamers are like nostalgic for it so they're playing so they can be like this is the deck I like Firebat is playing the deck that he won the first ever Hearthstone World uh, Tournament with. He's the Grandmaster. He was the first one, and he's been playing that deck. And that's kind of neat that he's playing his old deck because he could have always played it in Wild, but it wasn't um, it wasn't the same deck because they had made changes to some of the cards uh, over the years. So he wasn't playing it the same way. Now he can play that old deck against the people, you know, the decks that he won against. I don't know. I think that's kind of neat. Uh, it's not, like I said, it, it's not something that I'm like, oh, I can't wait to play uh, 
these old decks. But that's kind of cool. And then I am, uh, I you know, playing Wild and I'm playing Standard. And I'll be playing that on Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern with my Hearthstone stream. Uh, checking out the uh, the new expansion. Um, I'm keeping an eye on because some streamers that I uh, keep an eye on have been playing decks because they have access to the like the decks early and people have been theory crafting and I'm looking for some good wild decks uh, in, a, in a good weird standard deck and maybe to optimize my maybe my duels my d -d 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 duels paladin deck can get some new cards that'll be great my commencement duels deck would be awesome be rad if I could get uh, a new card to work with that deck a couple new cards maybe uh, these back skirts are going to be annoying. I would, so they're meant so you can take them off. So you can have the old skirt. Now, if I was going to display this, which I might, I would definitely glue these in. I would get my liquid cement and glue these back parts in because they're just going to keep flopping around when I lay this kit down, which, you know, I'll have to at some point. So no, thank you. But now we can take this part and we can, uh, move the arms uh, forward a little bit and then we can without touching the back because it, yep it's just going to keep popping off it's just going to keep falling off really annoying yeah this is bad uh, but anyway now the kit is body complete booyah there it is that's the glansa now, is it done? No, we still have to put cool armor on it. We still got to build the, we got to build a cool backpack. And we, you know you're getting towards the end of a high grade from the mid 2000s teens because these pages are in color. They always throw in a few pages in color and it's usually at the end instead of the beginning, but whatever. Um, often that's going to be where the flashy pieces are. All right. So now we got our cool backpack. It goes in the back here. Some big old weapons. You know me. I do enjoy some big old weapons. All right, so we'll get this off here. And more M pieces and some more pieces. Okay, so we'll get started on this. Uh, that's the skinniest waist that I, that's a skinnier waist than I was with it. Well, yeah, so that's the thing, right? They didn't build the waist out because the arm, if they put arm, more armor on the waist, it would be hard to maneuver and do anything. So instead, you end up with just like uh, extra armor, extra armor, tiny waist. Because if they were building this from scratch, the waist would be wider because it would just be a bulkier kit. Because the idea of this kit is it was the original, it was the original kit, and then like all of this, anything that's this color was added onto it to be like an armor upgrade. They didn't armor upgrade the all of the chest they could have but they didn't design wise so yeah it does just look like a kit that's wearing a bunch of layers uh and they just for and was just like i like a midriff no nah, i don't know all right so we'll get this uh unit connected here so many cool parts of this kit a bunch of stickers uh later coming of course because they got to they gotta have a lot of. I mean, it's gotta have a lot of stickers, right? Harold's, you have a great night. Thanks for being here. Thanks for checking in. Uh, I'll talk to you soon, my friend. Um, and again, folks, we will take a pause for the cause in a minute or two. I'm gonna get this to start a little bit, and then we'll take a little break here and get things going. Um, but yeah, that Thanksgiving at San Diego Comic Con is still just infuriating me. The idea of like 
hey, we're going to do a smaller version of San Diego Comic-Con this year. It won't be in the summer. Don't worry. We're going to do it later in the year. Thanksgiving weekend. But it's only going to be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. So it's not going to be a big deal. It's not like people are going to have to get there and uh, people are going to have to choose maybe having their first Thanksgiving with all of their family that has all been, uh, you know, a small version of their family. And they'll get to spend Thanksgiving together because they all have gotten uh, their their uh, shots. It's, hey, sorry, my job means I means that I have to go. Uh, <laughs> Slashbrook says, Thanksgiving isn't like a big holiday, right? Yeah. So even if they were going to set up on Friday morning, let's say uh, unrealistically, everyone is going to set up Friday morning. It means they're getting there Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, it means they're setting up on Thanksgiving. Um, and it's just, that's just such a terrible decision. It's just an awful decision. And people are in like, you know, like, yeah, people, people are going to do it. People are fucking there. Of course, they're, people are going to do it. They're going to be like, I wish I wasn't here for this. Like, I am not enthused. They're not going to be enthusiastic about it. But they're going to do it. And it's just awful. Just an awful decision. Really feel bad about it. But yeah. I mean, I, I get, I get why people are gonna, you know, I get why people are gonna, you know, try to get tables. I get why people are trying to get their booths. I get why people are gonna tell their employees, no, you're you're going to this. You're flying to San Diego. Uh, it'll be smaller, but you're still gonna go. We don't miss San Diego Comic Con. Uh, yeah, it's just a rough rough choice for a lot of people. And then people who uh, want exclusives and they want free stuff and they want they want things to be back to normal so much uh, will once again be mad at people who don't go to these things, right? That always happens. That happened with people who like uh, Emerald City Comic Con uh, was the uh, was cancelled like the week of and they wouldn't cancel it and they wouldn't cancel it. Uh, this was last year before, you know, all the lockdowns happened when a lot of lockdowns were happening. And this was Seattle. And people were like, you need to cancel this. You need to cancel it. And then when people and then so some people were like, hey, to protect myself, I am no longer I'm going to lose money. I'm no longer attending uh, this convention. And then their response was just like, but you're one of the reasons I'm excited to be there. And what do you mean? And what are you doing? And it's just like. Ah, oh, that just fucking sucks so much. And it'll happen again. People are going to be like, uh, I'm not going to the event. And then folks will be like, but you always go to San Diego Comic Con. But I'm traveling all this way. You're one of the people I'm excited about. It's just like, don't, don't go to cons. It just feels bad. And look, if I go to work Anime NYC in November, you can totally call me a hypocrite because I will be one. Uh, the choice, I might make that choice. Now, am I going to go on my own dime just to go hang out? No, I'm not going to fly to New York just to hang out at that convention. That is a convention I have worked in the past, and if the opportunity uh, to work arises, I will make that decision with my family if that is a thing we I'm going to do. But... Uh, but I am not at this point ruling it out, that possibility out. And I am a hypocrite. I understand. Even if I say like, you know, cause that also is in November, but also that is not the scale of San Diego Comic-Con by any stretch of the imagination. You, uh, anime N NYC at its best is a very, is a, is still a small con. Like, it's a couple weeks after, usually after New York Comic Con, and the difference in attendance is vast. Uh, but, like, I don't feel like I want to. But, like I said, I don't necessarily want to do that. But if the opportunity arises to, to earn some income, it's hard to turn down work these days. It's I have felt very pressured to take things. Uh 
and you know work however I can. So I don't know if I can turn down work if that if the if a job opportunity arises. I don't know. I will say I'm not going to go to PAX West. If PAX West happens in September, I'm not flying to Seattle. Now, am I going to PAX Unplugged? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to PAX Unplugged, but like that's more likely than anything else that I go to a smaller convention, the one of the smallest PAX, because it is still smaller than PAX South. It's not much smaller than PAX South, but it's still smaller than PAX South, uh, tenants-wise. Uh, going to that in Philly, like... That's still a possibility. I don't think I'm going to do it, but it's possible I do. All right, let's get this panel lined. We will take our pause for the cause in a moment. I'm going to get this panel lined, and then we'll talk about ways you can support the channel. If that's something you'd like to do, we'll talk about uh, my the event that I got coming up, other things you should check out that I've been doing. And then we'll start talking about some anime I wanted to talk about. Uh, get that going. And then we'll uh, hang out, talk about some other stuff. Uh, I do have one other thing to talk about. It's sell. It's small and kind of silly, but we'll talk about that after the anime in the "What Are We Watching Right Now" segment, which is one of the latest additions to the show because I don't have a lot of life experiences these days. So why not talk about things that are that I'm watching and enjoying on the internet? Why not? I also like that this backpack does just look like it's a piece of a plane. I genuinely very much enjoy when backpacks just look like weird flight, like weird like cut up pieces of a jet engine. that are just like, put that jet on there. That'll be cool. Anyway, hi. Um, first, before we get into my promos, you know I'm going to talk about, uh, if you're new to the stream, I'm going to talk a couple minutes about ways you can support the channel. Uh, it'll be pretty quick. Uh, you might find some fun stuff uh, that I'm that I'm up to. But uh, before I get into that, again, just save the date. It's uh, the whole weekend. It's happening 16th, 17th, 18th, the Plastic Bottle Weekender. I am taking part on Friday, April 16th from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Central, which is 9 p.m. to midnight Eastern, the normal time, my time zone, not the normal time zone. That's rude. My time zone is is Eastern, so 9 p.m. to midnight Eastern. Um, uh, I'm going to work on a model kit. I'll announce that uh, in April, what kit I'm working on. It's a, it's a weird little high grade. I'm going to try to build the whole thing in the stream. Um, and then every $50 cumulative that is raised during my uh, three hours, so I'll know the total is when I start, and then every $50 increment uh, of that, I will open a random pack of trading cards. I will tell you uh, that I have a bunch of cards here. Some are from trading card games that are well known. Some are from trading card games that don't exist uh, anymore, and at least two of them are just trading cards that came out because the movie came out and they were like make trading cards based on this property they're they're literally for trading they're not for battling there's no battle system uh so i got a bunch of different stuff i got more coming i think i have like four more packs coming uh so this should be very silly and fun uh and that uh that again is the 16th there's that um if you are currently a subscriber, please throw the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe emote in the chat. Let the people know you are, you subscribe. Uh, if you're Tier 2, you have that Bear Cave emote, or uh, sorry, that uh, Scythe emote. Uh, and then the Bear Cave and the Lego are for my Tier 1 subscribers. Uh, thank you very much, everyone who's subscribing. Uh, if you've been gifted a sub, you can convert that gifted sub into a regular sub, and they won't charge you till your gift sub is over. So if you have 10 days left in your gift sub, you can convert that. No pressure. Also, there's no pressure to become a subscriber. I would love it if you did. Seeing the numbers goes up, going up and up is great for me. I love seeing the numbers go up. But you don't have to, but you can. Um, also, you could gift a sub. You could join Bobby and Aristophan and Jolliffs uh, in gifting subs. Bits and coins always appreciated. We've got Harold and Jam with bits. Uh, and, you know, you could uh, do that. Bits and, bits and uh, cheers. Always happy to see those. Um, now, if you're like, well, I don't want to do that. I want to, uh, I don't want to, 
uh, join on uh, uh, subscribe here on Twitch. Well, you could join my Patreon. I got a Patreon, patreon.com slash Pat Bear. There's a $1, a $3, a $5, and a $10 tier. Uh, so cheaper tiers and one more expensive tier um, than just uh, jumping in here on Twitch. Uh, if you're watching this later on uh, YouTube, what's up, YouTube? Thanks for watching this archive. You can find all these links in the show description. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, so I got that. I got that. Uh, speaking of my YouTube, you could... Uh, for free, subscribe to my YouTube and watch the videos that I put up there when they come out. Uh, or you could, and this is nonsense, you could become a member for $2 a month. You get one video a day early, and that video you'll get tomorrow instead of my Wednesday video on Wednesday. You can watch it on Tuesday. It's a thing that you get. So you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, um, I offer that because it's available. Uh, it's another option. Um... So everything I make on YouTube, on Patreon, on Twitch goes to buying model kits. That is my thing. It all feeds back into this. Uh, so direct donations are also a thing you could do. Uh, if you were like, uh, yeah, here's $5, here's $10 once, but I don't want to do this like monthly. That's awesome. That'll go into a fund. I take out of that fund to buy model kits. I keep very good records uh, about money. That is a thing that I am pretty good at. Um, now. If you were like Pat, you got you got some kits that you're building. What if you didn't build those right now? What if you built what I want you to build? Well, you could buy something on Amazon, on my Amazon wish list, and then I'll build it on the stream. I'll even shoot a video about the kit you you bought and mention you if you want to add your name to the little card you can fill out, little paper that comes with it. Um, I've got very inexpensive Lego and inexpensive uh, nano blocks. We've only built one nano block. I, I wouldn't mind trying another one. Um, we've got entry grade kits, master grades, high grades, uh, very inexpensive kits, very expensive kits, pretty pricey Lego, very expensive for, you know, a master grade kits. Uh, also at the very bottom of my wish list is some tools because sometimes people are like, I don't know, I'll help you out, but I don't know. I don't know what to get, but I'll buy you this like model pieces shelf thing, uh, like storage, you know, for your uh, for like the parts and stuff. Like I'll get you that. Like that'd be neat. Like you do that, or you could do something like Lashbrook did. Lashbrook got me a gift card to USA Gundam Store. Got me two gift cards to USA Gundam Store, and I took that money and I bought the kit that I just about to finish building tonight and the kit that I'm starting next. Thanks to Lashbrook. Uh, and you have to DM me on Twitter that uh, my DMs are open and I don't check it as much as I should. And I will check it tonight. I just haven't checked it in a while or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, you could do that and that would be neat. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, uh, you can join my discord. That's free. That costs zero dollars. And I post build photos after every stream and people post stuff they're working on. It's a very chill, chill, uh, uh, Discord. Now, uh, I mentioned this earlier, Pat Bear's Anime Club. This was recorded live on my Twitch. This is the archive of it, Pat Bear's Anime Club. Uh, this episode was uh, my winter 2021 review, the wrap-up, and my preview of the spring season. Um, so I did that, and you should check that out. I had to do it a little early because the overlap is very close instead of like there's not like a two week gap between shows right now. So I had to do that. Uh, and then um, every week I do bear with me where I watch a video and I react to it. I'm reacting to a Shelly Duvall little video, which is very cute and weird. It is something from her PBS show. It is a surprise. I did not. It's, I'm always surprised, but you'll also be surprised, I think. Uh, and that was a fun bear with me. All right, I'm going to drink a little water, and then we're going to get into me talking about anime uh, and me finishing up this dig-dang kit, this dang old kit. you got to finish it. It's time to da -da, finish the kit. Uh, I got our war, as some people might say, finish the fight? Question mark. Drink a little water. Go to this overhead here. All right. So, uh, we're here. We're ready to do it. We're going to keep working on this kit here. Put it over here. So it is. See it right there as I work. 
And then I'm going to talk to you about, uh, hey, the season of anime has started. It started on Saturday with the new episode of My Hero Academia, which I should have covered on Saturday, but I was running behind on Saturday and didn't end up watching it. Uh, so I didn't cover it. Um, but I will talk about it now. No, 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 no. So, uh, My Hero Academia Season 5 has begun. Uh, we start with a wrap-up of what happened at the end of Season 4, where Endeavor uh, beat the uh, uh, exceptionally strong uh, Nomi, the bioengineered uh, creature, um, and is definitely, like, not in great shape uh, and is recovering after that battle. Definitely uh, burnt his whole self up doing it. Um, uh, you know, trying to be trying to be a hero, trying to be the next great hero, uh, trying to make his son proud, be the new All Might, all that shit, doing that thing. Um, and then the homeroom starts with a drill. It is a hero drill. All they know is that there are some villains there, quote unquote villains, and they know that it is not that it is like it is a drill, right? Uh, so the heroes, uh, so the so basically the heroes have kind of like formed like groups. There's like a rescue group. There's like an attack group uh, that tend to deal with villains. There is the uh, the group that you would expect to recon, you know, ear jack because she can plug in and hear sounds. Uh, the dude that can talk to animals is checking with the birds. And then there's the guy that, like, can make extra body parts. And he just, like, spreads out his long arms and has, like, a ton of eyes. So he can have eyes on everything. Uh, and I think that's genuinely very smart. Yeah, and then there's the rescue team. Uh, goes into rescue. And it turns out it's one of the upperclassmen. It's the dude uh, who uh, lost his powers. But he was brought in so you can kind of guess well who are the villains going to be the quote unquote villains are um, uh, the other two big three of the upperclassmen and they have to fight them and you're like uh oh what's going to happen well uh, they work to capture them but uh, Deku in his his 100% Deku-ness uh, he hesitates to actually hit his upperclassmen uh you know, he would have hit him if he was a villain, but he's like, uh, but that Red Riot and Bakugo do not have that problem. Uh, Bakugo, of course, goes overboard. They've already defeated the villains and Bakugo still hits him, which he definitely should not do. Um, also, Sun Eater did not want to be there, and that was very fucking funny. Sun Eater was just like, I want to go home because he doesn't like to be it have attention put on him anyway uh so he certainly doesn't like the idea of pretending to be a villain which was pretty fun i thought that was very cute that he was just like i'm going home and then he was like all right well they're good. she'll be mad at me if i don't do this so i guess i'm gonna do this i don't know i thought that was cute um all right, we're going to hit this with some panel lines, and then we'll continue. Uh, honestly, not a whole lot happened this episode. It was mostly just, like, getting people amped for it being uh, the show the show being back, uh, which I was. I got very amped about it. Uh, I was like, hell yeah, we're back in this thing. Let's do it. Um, more uh, My Hero Academia. Now, uh, also... I'm, I'm mixed about the new opening song uh, for a new season. I, it didn't really really do much for me, but the closing theme I thought was pretty cute, which is usually the first half of, a, of, of My Hero seasons. Uh, the, the, the song is cute, and then the second one is like, as things get heavier, the second one is just like, oh, yeah, we got a lot to do. This one was just like, hell yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. It's pretty light, pretty poppy. It was good. And then the closing credits... We find out that after um, uh, uh, after fighting, uh, Endeavor met, was reintroduced, or introduced to Dobby. And no manga spoilers for anybody about Dobby. Although the rumor bills existed for years about Dobby, and it's fine. Um, and then maybe Dobby has some sort of connection to Hawks? 
Weird. Socks working with the villains. Weird. What's going on? Hawks. Anyway, it was a pretty good episode. Plenty of action. It was cool to see some people like do stuff that don't do things that much. Like Pinky helped out a lot. Uh, fucking Mineta was helpful. A.K.A. Grape Juice. Mineta fucking held his own and helped out with the rescue. Which was pretty okay. I was pleasantly surprised. There was a moment of him being gross, but it was very short. And that's always nice when the moments of him being gross are short. So anyway, yeah. Uh, not the strongest start to my to a, a season of My Hero Academia, but a pretty good start. And I'm hoping we focus less on Endeavor. Because I just... I have... A lot of people have forgiven him. I have not. That dude sucks. And he is... A bad dad. He's a very bad dad. And not the best hero either. I do like his flame beard. I do like that. I will give him that credit. That is a good look. That he has flames coming at him so much that he makes it into facial hair. I think that is pretty great. And I will give him credit for that. But that is all I will give him credit for. Anyway, uh, Dr. Stone, Season 2. I uh, I had not been watching this weekly, uh, but I was watching it as I went, just kind of whatever, my own schedule. I get caught up, and then I fall behind. Then I get caught up again, just kind of like on my own, like whatever. I'm going to check this out now. Uh, I will say about that that... Uh, so I liked some of the new characters, and I did like some of the science. And I'm happy this season is over, which is bad. This is not the, that's not a, that's faint praise to say, like, I'm glad. Because the thing is, I'm more excited about the next season. Um, and a lot of the twists felt predictable. Even the big twist, which I won't get into, felt very predictable. Um, they did, there are a couple things I didn't see coming, so I'll give them credit for that. But mostly I was just like, since the beginning of the first season, I was like, I do not want to. I, I don't care as much about this battle as they care about this battle as an audience member. And so I was like, all right, I guess we're going to fucking have this big epic battle between these characters. I don't, I kind of don't give a shit about that. Um, so when we had that, I was like, all right, fine. Um, but yeah, I was mostly just like, Okay. Are we, can we go on to the next thing? So I am excited for the future of uh, the show, which is going on an epic adventure, going on a seafaring uh, journey uh, with many of the characters uh, seeing, you know, sailing the high seas in an attempt to find out more about the thing that caused all the problems on Earth. So that is interesting. So that they can petrify a guy to fix his internal organs is their big plan. Because they know that that will fix it. I mean, they found out it fixed somebody who had a huge uh, health problem that when they took them out, it's been proven. Um, so, yeah. Now, the thing I want to talk about that uh, I kind of tweeted about I was going to talk about tonight is you know y'all know this sometimes I go hard for a show and it maybe it's off-putting when I'm really talking about a thing that I just think is fantastic maybe it's off-putting for me to be like hey uh here's a show that I just like absolutely adore I think you'll like it you should check it out uh but that show is Non Non Biori which uh finished its third season uh, and, you know, for all intents and purposes, I can't imagine we'll ever see any more of it. I, I just can't believe that there will be more of this show. Um, it's lovely. Because we got three, look, we got three seasons of a very cool, very silly um, slice of life 
about young ladies in like this incredibly small, like barely counts as a town. Uh, and they're like lives in school and their lives after school. And just like, it's such a lovely show. It's so cute. I just want to highlight a few things now that we're done with the third season. Uh, there is a movie which I have not seen because I do not want to buy it on Blu-ray or DVD. I want to stream it somewhere and I can't, I would rent it. Can't do that. I have to buy it right now. There's no way for me to rent it. Um, I just don't want to own physical media like that. And so that is frustrating to me. Anyway, non non BRE season three. Some touching moments this season. Plenty of silly ones. Um, so this season, uh, I'll give it a lot of credit. They introduced a character that I was like, oh no. Why are, why are we introducing a, a new character in the show? Why are we introducing a new character in the third season? That's usually a bad sign. But... Um, uh, the socially awkward Akari, who is just trying hard. Uh, I really grew to like her as a character. Uh, and it helped quite a bit that a lot of her scenes were with characters that I liked already. And they grew to like her as well. Uh, especially her interactions with Renge were great because Renge rules. So if you're going to put a character next to Renge, that's awesome. Um, speaking of Renge... Um, her meeting Shiori, the young girl who is only a year younger than her, is huge for the show. Renge is the youngest by quite a bit. And to have her meet a character younger than her, and like when they first meet, she helps her out, and Shiori calls Renge uh, uh, Onechan. Uh, One and like it kind of floors her. It It's this moment where, uh, where Renge realizes... I'm a big, I can be a big sister. I can be a big sister type. You know, she's the youngest of three sisters. Her oldest sister is pretty older than her. Uh, there is no one younger in their friend group or school. And now Shiori is here. And Shiori is going to have a little sister. So she'll be a big sis. She'll be a big sister. And then uh, Renge can be a big sister to two kids. Um, and her like acknowledging that that is a big deal and it's a big deal to her and in her very silly Renge way acknowledging that like all right well I'm gonna have to work hard I'm gonna be I'm gonna teach her a lot of cool stuff because I'm the older sister now uh it was just really sweet really fun um uh let's see uh Oh, also, there's a moment in the last episode. So the last episode is great for a lot of reasons. So I'll get into that. But the moment that happens is uh, Renge's older sister, um, uh, who is, uh, what's her name again? Uh, she's in the show the least. Uh, Hiki, Hage, uh, oh, well, I appreciate that, Full Clips. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Um appreciate that uh welcome um that's lovely to hear uh thanks for watching the stream um okay so w there's two things i need to say about uh hikage hikage is from a series that the creator of the manga of nanan biori made first and she's not in it that much but in her life in tokyo one of her friends is an alien or a demon lord, or something. I haven't read that manga. I can't tell anything about it. But it's very odd to me that that's like that. She was like, "I want to write about that girl's sisters back home." So it's just like while she's in Tokyo. But the, the her big trade is she goes uh, to boarding school in Tokyo and comes home, and no one is ever really that impressed with the fact that she goes to uh, uh, to school in Tokyo. Like it doesn't it doesn't hit the way she wants it to. But Akari uh, uh, shows up and is like, what? You go to school in Tokyo? What's Tokyo like? <laughs> in the last episode, she finally gets to brag about the, her school stuff. And it's like, it's a, such a small little payoff, but it's beautiful. Uh, the last episode is also uh, Suguru, the older brother who doesn't speak. He literally doesn't speak in the show. He doesn't have a voice actor, folks. 
Uh, they never assigned a voice actor to this character because he doesn't say anything. He does look like he might speak, but he graduates. He's going to go off to high school. So they have a nice little graduation ceremony, which is great. Um, it's just like a lovely little moment in the show. And uh, and then, yeah, uh, is there anything else? Oh, uh, flashbacks with Candy Store and how much she loves Renge are really cute. Uh, there were some really good flashbacks this one. Um, and then, yeah, and then the they flash forward to the second school year, the next school year starting. Three seasons, and it was mostly the one long year, which is rad. Um, but Renge is going to start second grade. And the very first episode was her first day of first grade. So it's kind of come full circle. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was really, really sweet, really nice. I don't know. I thought it, I thought it was a cute show. Uh, if you are looking for something to uh, do, um, or you're looking for another show to watch, you're like, I just need, I need another show to marathon. I need something else. I have watched all of the YouTube I'm going to watch right now. I run out of YouTube. Um, it's all three seasons are on Crunchyroll. It is again called Non Non Biori. Uh, it is a lovely little slice of life. I wish I had been watching it sooner. I'd watched clips of it and was just like, I don't know, there were other things to watch. And so I didn't get around to it until this season, but I've been watching it weekly this season and it has been absolutely beautiful. So highly recommend Non Non Biori. Uh, and that is it for Anime Talk for this episode, but we're obviously going to keep building. We'll talk about some other stuff. Uh, so... A thing that's been happening with me is I've watched so much, uh, so many, like, um, videos on how to, like, work on cars and work on trucks and work on vans that now um, YouTube is recommending to me videos that are not native English speaking videos and that is not something that they have ever done before but they're just like you've watched all of the you've watched all of them that we have no more van life videos for you except this Japanese man converted his truck into like a camper do you want to watch that it's just him talking in Japanese and texting Japanese fucking watch that guy what do you do what else what else can we do? You've watched it all. Uh, and so I was like, oh, I, I, I have a problem. Uh, that Funimation promotion to get an extra three months for free on top of the free trial on PlayStation is five now. Oh, it's live now. Takes a few hours to get the code, extend the trial, but it works. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I would say right now, I would recommend to people... Um, if you're thinking about getting, if you have one and you're thinking about getting the other, you should wait because they are merging. And at some point, you won't need to pay for both. Now, who knows when that's going to be? Nobody fucking knows. But like, I don't know. If you haven't been paying for both now, you could wait, I think, a little bit. But you still should. But anyway, yeah, that was my big funny thing today. I was just like, like, hey, do you want to watch this? video of this van uh, this guy doing a conversion i was like yeah i you know i will youtube you know i want to watch that and then i was like oh this is not what i what i was expecting i'm not mad about this but this was not what i was expecting it was cool he's got like one of them japanese small trucks you know the flatbed is smaller than than a big like uh box truck conversion you normally see and he was cooking food in it. And it looked good. Isn't the government challenging the merger? It might be a while. Uh, last broke. I actually don't know. I had not looked into it. Um, I had not looked in to see if that merger. I just always assume mergers are going to go through. Because nobody cares. But maybe they do. Maybe maybe this Senate and uh, this Congress actually cares. But it never feels like they do. So I had not looked into it. 
Also, the fact that uh, Crunchyroll's uh, beta of their um, new web design just looks like Funimation's site, only darker, made me think, oh, this is definitely going through because they're trying to make the sites parody, uh, have parody. Although, obviously, there's a bigger Funimation store because they do a lot more video business or they at least want to do more video business. I don't know if they actually do more video business, but they want to. But yeah, I had not uh, I had not investigated. That is a thing for me to investigate. Lastbrook, I will take that into consideration and take a look to see. Um, but uh, what was I was going to say, um, I, uh, yeah, my YouTube habits, that, that's been that. Uh, watching a bunch of those. I was watching somebody um, that uh, they were like, oh, I have this property and I'm building a... Uh, a nice little shed there and I'll show you how to do it for the cheapest way possible and I was like this sounds great that's not th a thing I'm ever gonna do but this seems neat let's do it and then it was like here's the first video and it's like great here's the second video great here's an update video where I'm gonna get very preachy about Jesus and I was like you have a good time my friend I'll see you later you have your thing you love your thing that's cool I did not come here for a religious talk. I came here to watch you uh, uh, build a very inexpensive, not a house because you can't call it a house, so it lives on your property. Uh, piece of piece of equipment. I uh, did not come here for your thoughts on the Lord. So no thanks. See you later. And, then, and also, go into my history so I don't get recommended that channel because I did watch three videos. I didn't finish the third one, but I did watch three videos uh, back to back. So uh, the old algorithm is like, oh, you love this. Cool. We'll only recommend this person's channel. So you got to go into history. Get rid of there. My favorite truck conversion I've seen is a semi-truck trailer that was converted into a mobile smoker that can smoke 18 whole hogs. And Sharks 2K, hey, what's up, Sharks 2K, says that's a lot of hogs. And Sharks 2K is not wrong. That is indeed a whole lot of hog. That's a whole lot of hog. That's just, that might be too much hog. You might not need to smoke all that hog at once, I guess. That is a cool conversion, though. You are not wrong. But, yeah, I mean, I've watched sprinters and box trucks. And, uh, I mean... Did I watch a whole series twice about somebody that was uh, building uh, a shack, uh, a houseboat shack? You, you bet your ass I watched the houseboat shack videos twice because it was really engaging and it was a good person that was hosting it. And they're like six years old. And they stopped updating it. And did I search trying to find out what happened to that person. I have been unable to find out. My assumption is they just, like, stopped doing it. But, like, it's weird. That's an internet rabbit hole that, like, is hard to, to deal with sometimes. When, like, um, there was a YouTuber. She was small, but she was, like, big for to get uh, as a get. And I did this uh, web video, um, that was like, it was a bonus, like Nerdist paid for it. So we got paid, which is great. But we got this like internet person um, who was like kind of known a bit to, to be in it. And it was like, I didn't know who she was, but I could see she had a lot of followers. And when she like tweeted a photo, she tweeted a photo of, uh, of me and her because we were playing boyfriend and girlfriend in this bit. And I got like a lot of people being like, Oh, this is so cool. And oh, you're so lucky. And I was like, I don't know who this is, but okay, sure. Um, fine. Anyway, uh, that was the last video she ever did on the internet. She never posted when it went live. She never retweeted it. She had stopped doing videos on her YouTube channel. And then like two years later, uh, she like appeared again and she had just like changed her vibe and changed her look. And she was on like someone else's channel and she just was like, yeah, I didn't like I didn't like the person I was when I was making videos. But she like disappeared. Uh, and it was really funny because she was supposed to be the big get that would help like boost views. And maybe we would get on a, to do more episodes. And it was just like, no, it 
that video just coincided with her being like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I was like, was it me? Was acting with me the end, the deal breaker for this person that was just kind of there because somebody was on SNL on the cast of the video? I'll never know. But it is always kind of odd when people are just like, yeah, I post a video a week or I post three videos a week. All your fault, Pat. Yeah, so what Washington says. Yeah. Uh, but it is a, a weird thing when people like post like consistently and then just don't anymore. And now some people like post like a video and they're like, hey, you know, this hap is happening. Hey, I need time. Uh, um, if you are somebody that uh, follows on Twitter, ProZD, Sung Won, uh, you might know that ProZD had a secondary, he has U his YouTube where he posts, uh, you know, fun comedy bits uh, and, and sketches and stuff, his Vine stuff, his stuff for, that he originally started doing on Tumblr, all that stuff. He then, uh, he had a secondary channel called Press Bet, hmm, Press Buttons and Talk, and it was a Let's Play series where he and his friend Alex would play games, and sometimes his wife uh, would play as well, and Marie would play. And there were never webcams. They never did any Twitch or anything. They just did YouTube videos. But they would have a video up every day. And they would play terrible games, like Hamtaro games. And they would play, like, Mario Party games, with like the, which are, you know, more fun. But just your standard thing, right? Well, they recorded them live. So they were like, last year, hey, we're going to take a break. We're both in L.A., uh, but we are going to, uh, you know, we're going to try to be safe and we're not going to record anything. And that's great. And everybody understood. But then like other people start who do similar things were posting videos. You know, they were doing Parsec, right? They were, uh, they were doing Discord. They were doing whatever they were playing. They were still playing games. And it was like, you know, they could definitely do a video or they could do like some chats or whatever. Well, they're not doing any videos anymore. It's been a year. And then Sung Won was just like, yeah, we're not doing it. Alex is going through some stuff and we're not going to do it anymore. And it was like, that was the thing that I was like, yeah, I felt like that was probably it. They're probably like enough distance, enough not doing it. And they just didn't have the drive to like get back into it. But there are a lot of people that are just like, well, why? Like, I belong to your Patreon, like, you know, which they had paused. It's like, but just do it. Why can't you guys just do it? It's just like, well, they're not gonna. And they're certainly not gonna because you think they need to, as if they owe you something. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not how that works. Like, uh, they owe you. They put content out, and then you engage with that content, or you don't. And, like, look, do they want... Does anybody who makes stuff on the internet want the people who watch it to like it? Of course they do. You know? Of course. I make things hoping you'll like it. Now, sometimes you do very much enjoy the things I make. And sometimes you very much don't care about the things I make in any way, shape, or form. And sometimes you hate the things I make, and it's fine. Would I prefer that you love the things I make? It would be so much better if you love the things I make. Uh, but, you know, I can't make you love it. I can only just do the things. I'll tell you now, folks. We're not getting to the Strike Rouge. Uh, the Strike Rouge is not happening because we're not finishing this kit tonight. Uh, we're going to finish the backpack here. But looking at the time, we still have the... Uh, we don't have much left on the kit. Maybe we'll finish it tonight. Maybe we can finish it. Because, yeah, we only have the rest of this backpack and we have the uh, the shield to build. Because this doesn't have much else besides that. So we'll, uh, we'll get those two things done. But we're definitely not, like, doing more than this uh, tonight. And that's fine. I think that's okay. I'm not, like, mad about that. Um, but, yeah, we're not getting... Uh, we're not going to get to the Rouge tonight. So, sorry if that was the thing you really wanted to see. It's cool. You'll like it. But let's get let's get finished with this kit. We'll build it. If we go a little over past 11, that's okay. I'm all right with that. 
because it means that we will finish this kit. We, of course, are going to raid at the end of the stream. Don't you worry. We will raid. But we also want to get this done and get a... Uh, get this cool shield built. Or shields, I should say, because it's double shields. Because these are also shields that can hold weapons, which is pretty neat. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. It's a... It, the internet. It's fucking weird. It's a weird and Looney Tunes. Weird and strange and sometimes terrible. But sometimes pretty great. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. As I said, playing Hearthstone on Wednesday. You can come hang out on my Wednesday stream. It'll be rad. I think you'll have fun with it. Um... And then Thursday, we're going to start the uh, row, uh, sorry, the Strike Rouge Otary is a weird, it's still a weird thing to say, and I'm trying to say it, and that is a weird thing to say. For me, tomorrow, my Tuesday, I've got, uh, I got some yard work to do, not a big deal. Yard work, it never ends. I'm helping out my dad. I'm doing stuff that he would normally be doing uh, as he takes it easy. So I'm happy to, to do that. But also, my allergies do not love it. Uh, I've got a meeting um, uh, for a thing uh, that is a very much, I would call that, a long shot. The thing I've got coming up is a definite long shot. But I'm still, you know, give it my all. Hopefully that'll turn into something. Uh, and then going to watch the... Last episode of season two of that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Uh, we'll see if these characters came back to life. We'll see uh, that that had died. We'll see if these characters that hadn't died are getting an upgrade and what that upgrade is going to be. Uh, Outriders drops on Game Pass on Thursday. So there's something to look forward to this week. Hell yeah, dirty. That does sound cool. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm excited about that. And then tomorrow is the last episode of Black Clover. Yes, there is a movie. Yes, they have not announced that it will go seasonal, but I imagine they will announce that during at the end of the episode, or they'll promote the movie at the end of the episode, and the movie will say there's a second season, or there's a, you know, they'll call it season two, or they'll call it, they might do something like Naruto Shippuden. They might call it like Black Clover something or other. But I imagine it will come back seasonally instead of, the manga is still happening. It's still a very popular manga. So I imagine they will still make it. It's just that instead of doing... Uh, I, I have heard that in Japan anyway, the filler arc they did uh, had very poor ratings. And so they are considering not... They, they were thinking not to do another arc like that. Um, but yeah. Black Clover over and over. Yes, Black Clover over and over. Uh, Dirty says, I get free tacos tomorrow morning as well. Hell yeah. Dirty. Free tacos. That's rad. Heck yeah. Enjoy your free ta -ta tacos. That's great. Um, that's very cool. All right. We're not going to finish this. We're not going to get to the shields tonight. We're going to finish this part of the backpack. We will wrap up this kit at the beginning. I thought that we could finish it uh, on stream uh, today and, and get the next kit started. I misjudged how much time it was going to take to do this uh, to do this part of the kit. I totally misjudged how long it was going to take to do this. So I do apologize for misjudging. Uh, but we will we'll get this part done so that at least it's body complete, and then we will do the shields and uh, and put it all together on uh, on Thursday. And then Thursday we'll be able to finally get into the new kit, and that'll be great. So we'll do that. But we'll get this all we'll get this all combined. Got to put a couple stickers on there. Nothing too major. But we'll get this all done here. And uh, yeah. And then Thursday, get to finish off season two, because I thought it was going to be a 12-episode series season, but it's a 13-episode season, which rules. I will be uh, finally finishing up um, the uh, 
Um, why, why am I blanking on the name of a show? I was excited to see the last episode of uh, Laid Back Camp Season 2. Laid Back Camp Season 2 ends on Thursday. Very excited. I thought it was going to be a 12 episode season. It's a 13 episode season. So we do get a nice conclusion to that, which is great. Very much looking forward to that because I really like that show. It's very fun. So I'll see that on uh, Thursday. And there's some new stuff coming in, uh, uh, slowly starting. I'm keeping an eye every day for what's new and what's coming out so that I can see it. Uh, hey, words may be welcome coming in towards the end of the stream, but you're welcome to be here. Uh, as we're we're trying to finish up tonight, the glance of, we're not going to get to the uh, shoulder, the uh, shield weapons, uh, but we're going to finish this cool backpack. So we're going to get that done before we say goodbye tonight. Uh, so we at least can get that done and we'll get all the this part panel lined as well. Um, let's see what I was going to say. Uh, one show that was supposed to start today, but our, our you know, it, it did come out today. But nobody picked it up. It looks like it's a short about an office manager at a company who suddenly becomes a, a baby, but or like a th child, young child, but still has uh, all his like brain capacity of his regular self, and then continues to be the boss. Uh, and that I don't know if it's good or not, but I don't get to see it because nobody picked it up, which isn't surprising. But. Crunchyroll picks up some odd shorts, so it also could be that they just didn't pick it up right away, that it's, like, going to be delayed a couple days. Some sort of boss baby. Yeah, Lastbrook, it is, it is in a way, a it is a baby who is a boss, but it is not necessarily a baby who becomes a boss. It is a boss who becomes a baby. So, it is a little different. It might be baby boss more than boss baby. I don't know. But yeah, either way. Uh, what are you looking forward to f uh, for the next season? So, most looking forward to. Um, uh, I am tentatively excited about getting um, more uh, um, uh, Zombieland Saga. Because I genuinely really enjoyed Zombieland Saga. So I'm excited for more. I hope it's great. Uh, but yeah, I'm tentatively excited for that. Um, there are two, um, girls who are really into a thing anime coming out. Um, one is about a girl who ends up kind of on a whim getting a Vespa and she meets other girls that have mopeds. Um, and that seems like it's just going to be a chill slice of life that looks cool. Um, and then the other one I'm looking forward to, uh, there's another, uh, all girl uh, excited about a thing anime about pottery that like just looks like it'll be kind of fun um there's a bunch of stuff um uh slime diaries so while i did enjoy uh the vast majority of season two of that time i got reincarnated as a slime it is more of a traditional isekai, whereas the first season was like a mix of traditional and also kind of weird. This one is different in a way that I was like, yeah, I'm not as into it as I was the first season. But this uh, Slime Diaries is coming out, and that is uh, a, a side manga, uh, like a side story, and is more of a uh, day in the life of the people of Tempest. Um, and it's, it's apparently chill vibes. And so I am excited about the chill vibes when we've gotten like, uh, instead of what we had in this season, which was Rimuru just murdered thousands of people, uh, over the course of an episode and a half. Uh, and you're like, mm, and then like cool characters died and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm not as, you know, I'm, I'm less into that as I am other shows. Uh, so Slime Diary seems fun. Just the light stuff. Uh, I hope, I, I, I'm, I'm very hopeful for Dragon House Hunter because that just seems cute. Uh, that revenge movie, or revenge anime about the the uh, samurai lady trying to get revenge on the, on the people that uh, 
the rev the revolution that came through and uh, killed her family. Oh, looks dark as hell, and I'm kind of here for it. There's no fantasy about that. It's just just a revenge story. It's a lady looking for goddamn revenge, and that looks pretty cool. So yeah, I'll be checking that out. I'm really scared that Way of the House Husband is going to suck ass. And that's a great manga. You should read Way of the House Husband, folks. Uh, is Dragon House Hunter about a dragon that finds people houses? No. Shark Suke, similar. It is about a dra it is about uh, a peaceful dragon who gets kicked out of their home because the other dragons are like, you are not tough. Get out of here. And so the dragon just wants a quiet place where they can relax. And so they find a real estate agent uh, who is a demon uh, to help the dragon find a place. And, of course, because they're a dragon, people are looking to fight said dragon. And dragon just wants to relax. So it's just dragon just trying to find uh, a home. So we're trying to find uh, that dragon home instead of a dragon being a real estate agent, which is also a fun premise, but not this premise. This premise is, uh, what if a dragon just wanted to find, like, just like get some peace and quiet. Okay, so these can bend down like this part here, uh, and then you can hold it like this, which is pretty neat. I think you gotta take the hand apart to do that, but, but yeah, we can put the guns down like this, which is pretty great. And then there are shield weapons, which we will... Uh, Odd Taxi seems interesting. Words maybe, totally. Uh, that sounds amazing, kind of like Disney's The Reluctant Dragon. Yes, it does have kind of vibes to that. Um, and, of course, Words maybe says Godzilla. I've heard... Yeah, I, 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 I don't know much about that, but that does seem cool. Um, uh, I haven't heard anything necessarily about it, but, uh, but I know some people who are excited about that. And, uh, uh, yes... I, Dinazion, Dinazion, uh, SSSS, the the um, universe sequel, not a direct sequel to SSSS Gridman. SSSS uh, Dinazion does sound cool. Um, Way of the House Bunderman looks like the manga is a better choice. Yeah, so maybe the trailer is just bad. Maybe it just has a bad stop motion trailer. But if it's all stop motion, I think I'm gonna dislike it. Uh, that's just kind of the vibe I've got. All right, so. That's going to do it for our stream tonight. Um, we are going to finish the Shields uh, on Thursday, and then uh, we will move on to uh, our next kit. Uh, and again, teaser for that. Look at this lovely friend we'll be building next. Uh, just nice pink friend. I'm going to figure out, I'll, before Thursday's stream, I'll tell you what, folks. Before Thursday's stream, I'm going to figure out uh, what markers I want to use for this, because I don't know yet. Um, we are going to raid. I think I saw that they're deliberately going for a motion comic style. Yeah, well then that's bad because way of the way of the house husband's uh, trailer looks awful, and so maybe I got to see more of it to like it. Maybe it maybe a regular anime adaptation wasn't gonna work, but uh, what I saw of it did not look good. Again, uh, we are gonna raid my next build stream uh, will be this Thursday, but my next stream stream, my next stream in general is uh, Wednesday, where I'm going to play Hearthstone because there's going to be a new expansion. So I'll be playing some Hearthstone. Um, so feel free to come to that. And again, we are going to go raid. Uh, now, is this going to be uh, a build streamer? Probably not. I'm going to see who is streaming right now. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to go... Uh, uh, we're going to go raid um, Jordan, a.k.a. Ray FK, who's playing Yakuza uh, 6. Uh, Jordan absolutely rules, and we're going to go give Jordan some love, uh, who goes by the handle Ray FK. So we're going to go give Jordan a little love there. Good night, Shark UK. Thanks for being here. I hope you have a great time uh, the rest of your evening. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go raid. Feel free to come along, folks, as we raid uh, uh, Jordan, a.k.a. Ray FK, uh, who is a fantastic streamer and a great person. And we'll go give uh, them some love. So if you're going along in that, I'll see you in the next Build with Bear. I hope you have a great Monday, rest of your Monday. And, hey, I'm going to play Hearthstone on Wednesday, so come hang out for that. See you next time. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.